Good morning and welcome to Rising. We have a great show for you today. Kim, who do we have? Well, we have Emily Jashinsky. She's going to join us to discuss how Floridians feel about Governor Ron DeSantis possibly making a run for the Oval Office. Plus, the FCC wants to find right-wing activists for robocalls made leading up to the 2020 election. Uh, Richard Haninia is also joining us to weigh in on what the situation in Afghanistan reveals about U.S. foreign policy. Meanwhile, a security threat has prompted the U.S. Embassy in Afghanistan to urge Americans to avoid traveling to the Kabul airport unless given specific instructions to do so. A security threat has prompted the U.S. Embassy in Afghanistan to urge Americans to avoid traveling to the Kabul airport unless given specific instructions to do so. Britain has also urged its nationals to avoid the airport, citing, quote, very, very credible intelligence that terrorists were planning an imminent attack on the thousands of people gathered outside the airport, unquote. Earlier this week, President Biden warned about an ongoing threat by an ISIS affiliate in Afghanistan. ISIS-K is a sworn enemy of both the Taliban and the United States. Alyssa, uh, what, what, do, what do you make of the, of the, late, of the latest uh, developments around the airport? Well, I think we have to take the warnings tremendously seriously. Um, the, the IC, the administration, don't usually come out and say very, very credible unless something is truly dangerous and at uh, grave risk to life and limb. So ISIS-K, ISIS Corazon, is basically the Afghanistan affiliate of the global ISIS network that we're aware of. They're known for using uh, sort of traditional ISIS methods of car bombs, um, taking advantage of large gatherings of people to attack. Um, there, you it's could kind of remarkable in a way that you've had this, this massive crowd that's a huge soft target for a week and a half now. And in that it's it held this far. Yeah. yeah. And, and it's, it is a good point that the Taliban and ISIS are sworn enemies, so there's a level of that's probably kept them at bay to some mm -hmm. degree. But this is a prime opportunity for a terrorist attack. So it's um, the, the, the warning should be heeded by all folks in the region. Yeah, and I want to bring up that I believe that they've detained a couple of the ISIS-K. Uh, they, they were able to find them, detain them. And I don't know who was detaining them, whether I, I would imagine maybe Taliban. But uh, they said that they were surveilling the airport and looking at the crowd so that they and that was definitely part of this. Also, the Russians have evacuated. And that to me, when I saw that news, that Russia had even pulled uh, its the people from their embassy, I believe they had 500 people in the country, roughly. Uh, that is pretty alarming because they're the one country or one of the few that said that they were going to keep the embassy going. They were going to stay. They were trying to have some diplomatic relations with the Taliban. They're going to recognize them as a government. So for them to pull their people, say, citing also these terrorist threats is pretty, that, pretty alarming. Something's really serious. Yeah, and, and this is kind of a, a moment of reckoning, too, for a lot of people who have been saying that the, the initial stages of this were, were too chaotic and Biden deserves you know, all, all the blame for that and that there was a better way to do this. You know, say, you know, I'm for the withdrawal, but I just wish it would have been done better. And there have been a lot of other people who have said, you know what, you can't actually do this without there being some chaos. And so now we have a negotiated situation with, with the Taliban in Kabul. Uh, you know where the United States has has uh, has launched into this you know Herculean you know airlift. Uh, what eighty thousand plus people have been taken out of Afghanistan so far, a, a real uh, logistical success so far. And yet, still th in the face of that, uh, there's now a terrorist threat that's shutting down a bunch of uh, you know a, a bunch of different access points to the airport, which just goes to show that you have two ways of this not going off the rails. One, you don't go to war in the first place in Afghanistan. Right. Or two, if you go to war, you win the war and then you also win the peace. We didn't do either of those things. We went to war and then we lost it. And so this is what it's gonna look like. Well, and the U.S. has roughly 36 hours to complete the Afghanistan evacuation. Yesterday, Secretary of State Anthony Blinken said they appeared on track to complete the evacuation and committed to making sure everyone that wants to leave can. The president has also asked uh, for contingency plans in case he determines that we must remain in the country past that date. But let me be crystal clear about this. There is no deadline on our work to help any remaining American citizens who decide they want to leave to do so, along with the many Afghans who have stood by us over these many years and want to leave and have been unable to do so. That effort will continue every day 
past August 31st. The Taliban have made public and private commitments to provide and permit safe passage for Americans, for third country nationals, and Afghans at risk going forward past August 31st. The United States, our allies and partners, and more than half of the world's countries, 114 in all, issued a statement making it clear to the Taliban that they have a responsibility to hold to that commitment and provide safe passage for anyone who wishes to leave the country, not just for the duration uh, of our evacuation and relocation mission, but for every day thereafter. But listen, here's my concern. So we've basically telegraphed to adversaries and allies alike in the region that all Americans, there's about 150 left, need to evacuate in the next 36 hours. So if I'm ISIS-K, I'm hearing that, and I'm thinking there is a specific window if I want to target and tar target Americans. Now, the State Department should, at this point, have the capabilities to personally be in contact with every single one of those Americans who's still in country. They should be able to privately notify them that this is, you know, there is a coming deadline you need to get to the airport. To me, this just reeks of a complete cluster at every level, and I mean, I'm genuinely praying that something terrible doesn't happen in the closing hours before all Americans have to be out. The issue is them getting to the airport. I mean, that's the, the problem is, yeah, we know that there's these 150 Americans, but, and we say, okay, you've got 36 hours, we're out of here. They can't get to the airport. And as much as the administration is saying that, well, the Taliban is, is ensuring safe passage, and uh, that's not really all the reports we're getting on the ground. I mean, it's difficult for the Taliban leaders to necessarily transmit that to all of their fighters on the ground. And we're hearing that there are some instances or run-ins. I don't know how often those are happening, but Getting to the airport is the challenge right now, and especially when the embassy is saying, now, don't come to the airport because there's a terrorist threat. I mean, well, this is a very <clears throat> tricky situation. Key, key to that statement was don't come to the airport unless you've been directed to do so. Yeah. And so clearly, if they're directing the people to do so, they're in touch with those particular people, and and they're making arrangements to meet them somewhere so that they can be shepherded into the airport. That's the, that, that's the clear implication. Of, of, the, of that statement. There's, and and there's, a, there's no other way if, if every access point is closed off, yet they're saying we're going to be able to get these people out of the airport and don't come to the airport unless you've been directed to do so. That's clearly what's going on. And I think the point of raising the, the 36 hours, say, look, th this, this window's closing in 36 hours, is say, look, there are, you know, say, 500 to 1,000. They're not, a, they're not precisely sure how many Americans actually want to get out of Afghanistan. You know, there are a lot of, you know, if, if, you, stayed, if you stayed up until the middle of August, like you're, you were fairly committed to your mission in, in Afghanistan. And a lot of people are going to remain committed to this humanitarian mission, you know, post-Taliban. So I don't know what the a lot will be, but it, in, in the matter of several hundreds. And so I think the U.S. here is communicating to people like, no, seriously, if you want to stay, stay. But if, if you want to go, we're leaving in 36 hours. And what Blinken said additionally is interesting, that if you change your mind and in a month from now, you know, you need to get out, we have a commitment from the Taliban that we're going to be able to, uh, you know, get you out safely, and we are committed to getting you, our allies and our Afghan partners, out. So, that, so that's interesting, and, and the interests align there, that Taliban doesn't have an interest in, in bringing us back into kind of an air war in Afghanistan. So you could see why they might right. agree to that. The one thing I want to well, be sensitive to, though, and sorry, Kim, is um, there's a lot of folks working for NGOs who've spent the last, you know, five, 10 years in Afghanistan who did probably wait out the first wave of departure notifications and being told they should leave the country. They've been through turbulent times before. But what we're seeing now is kind of unparalleled in the 20 years we've been there in the threat environment around Americans and there being just literally one access or access and exit point. So I do, I do think a lot of these folks are, they feel like the rug was pulled out from under them from Biden world. And now they're thinking they have to risk life and limb to make it to the one airport because we let Bagram fall as well as other access points. Well, as the United States works to get Americans out of Afghanistan, Mexico has taken in New York Times journalists from the country offering temporary protection in the country while they attempt to find new permanent residents. And defense contractor Eric Prince is also offering his assistance by charging $6,500 for a ride on his private jet out of the country. I really hope for that $6,500 bucks he's going to extract you from wherever you are. Uh, I mean, and then in which case, I mean, you know, 
Right. If it's a if it's a difference between getting out or not getting out, um, you know, I'm sure most people would check to see what their credit limit is on their credit card and 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 run that sucker. Uh, you know what you know what Eric Prince is up to is is anybody's guess. Meanwhile, the UN you know has, has uh, just accused him and this Intercept has done some reporting on this too of illegally uh, you know funding U U.S. opponents in in Libya. Uh, you know, he, he's as one of his many mercenary mercenary op operations around the world. So this appears to be, you know, one more kind of mercenary operation. Yeah, I'd have to have more information. If he's truly extracting people, it certainly seems worth it. But I'd also wonder, is he taking donations? I'm sure there's plenty of Americans who would want to contribute to funds to help evacuate Afghans who helped us. Um, if it's purely profiting off of a humanitarian disaster, that's certainly terrible. Right. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Eric Prince would never. <laughs> yeah, right. We'll tell you uh, what's on our radars up next.